Florida Winter Tour. Stop number six. Quiet, relaxing, productive. Not one of the top picks. Let's go get into it. Stop number six takes us to Palm Beach, Florida. We are at the Palm Beach Traveler. You may wonder, why not a top pick? Well, first off, but we'll start with the, the RV park itself. The RV park itself, really nice little place. Um, it's not super huge, but it's laid out really nice. It's very well kept and very clean, and well run. Don't have a bit of problem with the park itself. Not a lot of, you know, super amenities. They do have a nice little laundry area. I think they had four washers and four dryers. Um, there is a little pool. Um, it's sort of an indoor pool. Um, it like has screen walls. Um, so you could use it rain or shine, but it is tiny. Uh, like if you ran and jumped on one end, you'd be halfway to the other end. No exaggeration, but a pool nonetheless. Uh, they do have a little bath area with some showers, bathrooms. So, yeah. the large building in the center of the place is where the office is. That's also where the pool is. There is a clubhouse type area where you have a large gathering place where there's couches and a big screen TV and a stereo system and possibly the world's last functioning Nintendo Wii system with some games and um, there's a full-size kitchen in there with a bunch of tables I'm sure that's for gatherings for the park which you know we're still dealing with COVID stuff so that's not really happening um, which on another note I do want to say we're seeing that a lot of places are, are kind of using the, oh, well, COVID's going on, so we can't really do anything, but I will give credit. This place is still putting in the effort. Um, they, I believe I saw a sign coming up there, they're going to do a fish fry. Uh, now, obviously, it's a little bit different. You know, you get signed up on the list, you pay your fee, and then as opposed to everybody going up and gathering and having a fish fry, you just go up and you get all your stuff to go and you take it back to your rig and you eat it there. But, you know, at least they're still putting in the effort, um, not just phoning it in. Okay, so now we'll cover the reason why this was definitely not one of our top picks. Um, the park itself, again, fine. The area that the park is in leaves a little bit to be desired. Um, there's plenty of things around, um, there, you know, as far as groceries and you know there's little strip malls with all kinds of businesses that are close by so you know you can pretty much get anything you might need but as far as anything in the area to see or do just a dead zone um, as soon as you leave the park um, what you're going to find is you're right in the middle of a lot of very run down low income housing um, is what it is um, it's not what I was expecting when I heard the word Palm Beach now again in all fairness we were kind of in a kind of an outskirt little suburb of Palm Beach area um, technically the park is in Lantana Florida so if you want to look that up you can get a better idea where that is we did venture out a little bit um, of course we had to make our typical run out to try to find some some food um, check out local restaurant we did find um, we took off and drove over to the actual coast beach area since this was our first time of being on the the east side the, the ocean side of Florida um, which took us over to an area Lake Worth Florida we found a nice little place called Benny's on the beach um, food was good it was kind of a cool place the restaurant actually sits out on a huge pier that goes out over the water um, so you know 
from our seat, we were looking right out at the at the beach and the water. Um, good food. Had some great great black and mahi tacos. Yeah, you know me and tacos. So if you saw our last video, you know we kind of we had a lot of stuff around there that we could have seen and done, and we chose not to because we decided to kind of relax after a very busy stop place before that when we were in Tampa. Now, you know, it's a hindsight moment. Had we known what we were going to have here, we might have made a little more effort. We could have you know, done our recuperating and relaxing here since we don't really have a lot of other choices. But, you know, it is what it is. You don't know what you don't know. So, like with anything else in the RVing world, you adapt. You overcome. So, took the time when we didn't really have anything else going on to be productive so there was a lot of just little things nothing major at all nothing that couldn't have waited months more decided to use this time to get some little projects done some things on the rig tighten up fix up replace whatever um, I'd had all the stuff for a really long time um, so decided to go through the process of buffing out all of the oxidation off the rig, um, which if anybody's done it, you know what kind of task that is. Um, I won't go into a lot of detail. Um, obviously, I didn't take a bunch of video of, you know, me buffing oxidation off the rig, because, um, you know, who really wants to see that? Um, especially since most of the time I had my shirt off and well, yeah, you could write a list of the people that want to see that on a hair. So um, I will tell you um, if anybody's interested, because um, I know, you know oxidation is an issue, um, whether you have a travel trailer, a fifth wheel, a motorhome, even boats, um, it's a thing. You have to deal with it. Uh, now, if you've ever inquired um, with like a mobile wash type of person detailer, and then you've had that moment where your heart stopped for a second after they gave you an estimate of what it would cost for them to remove all that oxidation. Yeah, I can tell you, um, it, it's probably worth it because, man, it is some serious work. Um, I did did it over a period of days. Um, I did not try to knock it all out at once. I did most of it by hand. Um, I did go on to uh, Amazon and I ordered one of the attachments with the little wool pads that you put on a, a cordless drill driver. So in some of the areas that needed a little extra help, I could use that. Um, it does make a huge difference. Um, if you already have like a, a, a buffer, yeah, you're going to want that. Um, the product I used was uh, Meguiar's um, oxidation remover. And I'll put a link to both of those things down below. Um, stuff was incredible. It did a fabulous job. Um, almost looked like I had actually just waxed the rig. Um, it brought back so much shine. Um, my rig is not a full body paint. Um, I do have you know, decals. And if you're curious, yes, it even brought back a huge amount of the color and the shine to, to those. So definitely worth it. It was a lot of work. But I suddenly found myself with nothing else to do. So why not? Now that kind of brings me to one of the perks that did come up with, with this particular stay. Um, it's very nice and toasty warm here. I, I've been noticing that the whole country seems to be under a strange deep freeze right now. Um, I just recently saw a news story about um, the state of Texas. And, you know, God bless those people. They don't, don't, they don't know how to deal with strange cold I'm sure because it just doesn't happen but you know I was looking at pictures of all of the coastal parts of Texas pictures of palm trees with snow all over them um, you know having major power outages and just all across the country there it's just this crazy weird massive extreme cold and this place happens to be in the tiny little very bottom section of Florida where you know it's first week of February it's 85 degrees so yeah so yeah um, all in all I mean it wasn't a bad stop um, just not what we expected but you know, you've heard me say it many many times before 
sometimes you just got to pivot and figure out a new direction. So instead of this being a big touristy type of stop, it turned out to be a very productive stop, which is still good. Uh, got things done that needed to be done. So, you know, that's, that's always a plus. And, you know, the place was nice. The people, incredibly nice. Um, all the people that we talked to right around us were all very friendly. Um, there were, when I took a walk, got to the back of the park, um, there was what you could tell were very, you know, long-term, more permanent um, people in the park, which fine with me. Again, like I said before, people are willing to stay there long-term and permanently. The place must not be bad. It's just, there's nothing around. Um, it was a pretty lengthy drive over to the beach area, and even that was pretty blah. So, there you have it. There was our uh, stay in the Palm Beach, Lantana, Lake Worth area. Off to our next stop. This one's going to be cool. This one's got me a little excited. Probably a little more than her, but stick with us. See where we're off to next. Peace, guys.